we're staying with the NDC. Now, President Mahama says he will convene a meeting of all contestants of the parliamentary primaries to strategize ways to ensuring a convincing uh, victory in 2016. He was addressing party supporters when he was endorsed as a party's flag bearer for the 2016 general elections. <laughs> Though the president stood unopposed, efforts were injected into ensuring he crossed the 50 plus 1 votes required by the constitution. Nonetheless, the president and national executives targeted a 100% endorsement out of a total of 1,286,728 party members who cast their vote. 61,836 voted no to President Mahama's candidature in 265 out of 275 constituencies. The no votes represented a 4.90% of total valid vote cast. Rejected ballots of 25,774 represented 2% of total vote cast. The Electoral Commission declared him the winner of the polls, describing the process as orderly and very transparent. As the flag bearer of the NDC for the 2016 general elections. The president, supported by his team and other party bigwigs, expressed joy for the support and confidence reposed in him. I have obtained an endorsement of 95.1% from members of my party. This figure is significantly higher than the 50% plus one endorsement our constitution requires me to obtain. With the novelty of this new system and the greater participation it afforded all members of our party to vote in these primaries, I feel very humbled. I also wish to thank those who voted no, either in error or deliberately. Because in the order of nature, it is the interaction of agreement and dissent that creates human progress. You cannot produce energy or electric power with only the positive pole. You need the positive pole and the negative pole to produce energy. On the chances of the party going into the 2016 general elections, he said a solid team will be required for a one-touch victory. There are no winners and there are no losers in this contest. It has been a family contest. I expect that any hard feelings flowing out of this contest would quickly be put aside so that we can all work together for the victory of the party in 2016. Very soon to hold a big family meeting that will bring all those who contested the primaries together. This will certainly be, be before the end of this year's break. We must smooth over any disagreements arising out of these primaries before the end of the year. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Sakra. Uh, that was at the party headquarters yesterday, and I guess if you uh, follow uh, what happened there, uh, the NDC uh, right after the primaries in Accra. Now, my guest tonight will help me to understand what happened yesterday, uh, particularly uh, with the NDC as they get ready for election 2016. Uh, to my left, the national organizer of the party, Mr. Kofi Adams, and then to my extreme left, uh, David Agbe is the executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. So Thank you. Uh, we're getting ready for 2016. Kofi, let's start from here because this is a critical issue. Yeah. Some have said that it, it, they had wanted to see President Mahama score a hundred percent in the I don't know whether to call it endorsement or acclamation or a yes or no vote. It, was that possible? That is that is never possible. So, so the party knew it was it wasn't going to be. Oh sure, it, it's like when you're 
child is going to write an exam. So mm -hmm. your wish is that the child gets 100%. But even when a person doesn't get 100%, and you sell within the A plus zone, you are satisfied. Mm. So you ask for all to endorse you. But even if some don't, there's no problem about it. The party itself knew too well that it's possible not to get all to endorse. That's why we put in our constitution that even if you are the only person who filed, you still need 50% plus one. Mm. We didn't say you need 100%. We didn't also say anything more than 50% plus one. We just said all you needed is absolute majority to be able to become the flag bearer. And to get 95, over 95%, 95.2% of the total uh, uh, this, uh, votes cast, that is over 1 million of it. It's for me. It's so so support. those who say that it, it, he... His own party, even his own party people, some don't want him. <laughs> How do you react see, to In it? 2012, mm. we had a delegate conference. The same, com the same conference that met in Sunyani also met in Babayara Stadium in Kumasi mm. to endorse President Mahama. For that election also, he was the only candidate who picked forms after the demise of late President Mills. It was a yes and no voting. He didn't get 100%. It was about 99%. So this is not the first time. Even that one that was a delegate of less than 4,000 people, he didn't get 100%. But he went ahead and won a one-touch uh, uh, victory for the party. So we were not expecting 100%. And that is not possible in any election whatsoever. That you have over 1 million people voting. It's just not possible. Because even with just 3,000 plus, mm. you can't get 100%. It is only when you have only about 10 people voting. That that may be that may be possible. But you can't you can't you don't expect to have. That. <laughs> Let me speak to David. David, you are thinking the same. Yes, uh, politically, I mean, even if you are doing research in politics and in political science, uh, we have a margin of error, and the margin of error is about five percent. So going into context, uh, we shouldn't expect you know hundred percent at all. If it is about pure science. Even pure science, they, they looked at a margin of error about 2% or 1%. So coming into politics, and which is political science perspective, getting 100% is something that you cannot you know, establish in political that's science. That's about 60,000 votes. Uh, Kofi, is that about 6,000 or 60,000? Yeah, about 61,000 61, That's a lot of votes. It can make yes. you a president. Yes, but, but getting 95%, some of us were expecting that because he's a lone candidate, you should have, you know, gotten almost about 97. Uh, but to get, you know, 95, it gives you a certain signal that a certain people just want to, you know, send a caution statement to the president that he needs to do more. His own party. Uh, yes, he members. needs to do more at various constituencies. Mm. I listened to the president very well. He also acknowledged, and looking at his, you know, facial expression. He was expecting something beyond, you know, 95%. And he taxed the party functionaries, the executive, that they need to investigate. They need to do a serious checks to be able to establish why those things actually, you know, happened. And so there is a cause for the party executive to mm. investigate why those things, you know, happen. They need to visit various constituencies to dialogue with them, to find out. There were a number of things that actually went wrong. You know, the party... You know, headquarters, the national officers didn't engage the various communities and various constituencies very well. There wasn't enough education at all. They were like, you know, they were at the top there disseminating information without engaging the people. So there were a lot of lapses, I mean, in various constituencies. So okay. those are some of the things that, that the party really would need to look at. Uh, let, let me quickly uh, show, uh, Kofi, I got it a chance to react, uh, but let me show you the regional breakdown of. Uh, the yes and no uh, vote for President uh, Mahama uh, there. I could let my producers put it on your screens there so that you can see how uh, they voted. So you, that is what is on your screens there. Now, the Upper West region, you can see over 62,000 uh, said yes to him, 6,000 said no, Upper East over 98,000. Am I right? Is it 98,000? Yeah. Yes, said yes, uh, uh, no, 6,000. Northern, 227,000 said yes, and then no 10,000. Bona Hafo, 115 plus, and then uh, uh, no was 4,000 plus. Ashanti region, 103,000 plus, and no 4,000 plus. So uh, you can see the, the, the no figures. 
uh, upper west, upper east, and northern region, particularly, that's the president's hometown. Kofi, how would you want to react to that? The, right. the fact that his home region, 10,000 people, said no Don't to him. Don't forget that you are talking The about other regions are on your screens. Kofi, go ahead. about 31 constituencies. Mm. And don't also forget that the years was also significant. In terms of percentage terms, it, that was a very high. He got more than 97% in terms of percentage terms. If we look in at the it, northern region. In the northern region. Mm. So if you have to even follow all the arguments that people want to put out there, then it means that he did extremely well in the northern region. But let me state that. This is the first time we are doing what we've done. So we right. have the chance to learn a few things. And one of the things we have learned is combining parliamentary and presidential elections create a certain uh, difficulties and challenges for especially the presidential candidate. Because people will campaign using him. And so if I am an aspirant, I have my followers. You are an aspirant, you have your followers. Mm. And people have a perception or a belief that maybe the president supports me or likes me more because possibly he has given me an appointment. Okay. Your followers tend to be angry. Some of your followers, not all, tend to be angry at the president that the president has given me an advantage over you. So we, we receive a number of calls in the course of all these process. Mm. And we have to take time to educate some. I'm sure those who did not get a chance to call us would not get that education. So out of anger, that would my person was disqualified because the president didn't the want president him. Didn't want him. When so I vote against the president. I vote against the president. <laughs> well, this I person see. has used the president's portrait alongside his portrait, meaning that since we didn't stop him, meaning that the president support that person. And so I'll vote against the president. We had all those kinds of views. That is why the president took time in his thought sometimes to make very significant statements that people are free to use his portrait. Mm. And that the fact that you are using his portrait does not mean an endorsement of you. And that the decision to select the candidate rests in the hands of the members of the party who find their names in the register. This was made in some of the, of the regions just to attempt to kill that. I'm sure if we were just voting only the president and not combining it with the parliamentary elections, possibly the figures may have been higher because you have some of the no's being accounted for as a result of this situation. Some others that you could see intentionally will vote no and take a shot of it and put it <laughs> on the it. WhatsApp uh, platform. <laughs> We're also possibly doing it for, 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 for other mischief uh, purposes. But like the president put, there was no indication or any sign that the president was not satisfied with the over 95% endorsement that he got. Indeed, he, w he, he wouldn't, he would campaign for all endorsement, mm. but of course, you don't expect to get. Like I told you, in 2012, when it was just a delegate conference of 10 persons from each constituency, plus some selected regional executives and national executives and MPs, he didn't get 100%. Uh, and that is just not. Uh, it's not possible. To, to, uh, David, the, the, the president spoke and said that he is not taking for granted the, the 6,000 uh, 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 votes that went against him. How serious should he take that? I think that it is good that the president have acknowledged that he's not um, going to you know, gross over the 6,000. It tells you that internally the president and the party needs to do more because mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of research. I mean, so far this year, we've visited almost about 10, you know, nine regions. And you could see visibilities of infrastructure development across. But there are a lot of people who are also not happy about the government and the party, especially the, the youth. Uh, David, so you want to perhaps react to Kofi's assertion that perhaps it, it is simply not a matter of... Uh, Either uh, they are angry because the person is supporting uh, another perceived, candidate against perceived, perceived. It, support, it, but it, perhaps they are not happy with uh, what is happening generally on the ground. Yes, Kofi's point is, is one variable, mm. but there are a number of things that, you know, if you talk to the NDC people and you talk to them on the street, they will tell you that some of them, they are really dissatisfied, especially 
when it comes to employment. The 10 people, when you meet them, when you visit them and you talk to you engage them, they will tell you that they are not happy at all because mm -hmm. they've not been offered a job opportunity. Many of them, almost about three years, four years down the line, they've not gotten a job. And so don't expect those people to be happy because obviously they have that spirit of um, frustration and aggression. Mm. And when people are frustrated, they become more aggressive and they want to pin you to the down and tell you that, no, you need to satisfy our interests. And it is good that some of these people have expressed their view. That makes it you know, good for the party because this is a, a democratic institution. You should allow people to articulate their views. You should allow people to express their sentiments so that you'll be able to work on it. And I think that they shouldn't play with it. We, we know that the economic indicators and the strength of the economy is no good. But for IMF and World Bank to tie the government to the ground, telling the government that you should not employ. And you also say that you want to punish your youth. It is not good no, at all. No, no, they no, need no, to no, work no, at no, this, this on this, un this, unemployment this related issue because it is one of the critical things that when you meet the youth on the street, they are always complaining about it. And the better they deal with that issue, it will even strengthen the government because if you have a lot of graduates not working, it is not good for the economic growth. Look, 2011, this economic growth uh, grew 14.7, quite magnificent. Even in the, uh, across the world, you could realize that Ghana's economy was on a good path. But along the line, when they started this issue of, I mean, they are not going to employ a lot of people, you could realize that the economic indicators were coming so down. So the votes is, is a protest. It is a it's protest. A, okay, David, it's okay. Let me get COVID to react. First so, foremost, it is a protest. We, we should be careful mm. right when we are researchers of the kind of language that we use. Mm. Government is not out there implementing somebody's decisions that is pushing on it. These are homegrown solutions, as has always been indicated by government. Government is also not out there to punish, as he claims, that you are punishing your people by not them because somebody says so. It's a basic thing. Take TV3 here. If there is a job that can be done by 10 people, and you have 10 people, and you have five more people applying, the fact that five people are applying does not mean that you should take another one or two because they are applying. When the job can, will be done and it's been done by 10 people. That is all the policy is. That in places where you have reached, the, you have actualized in terms of numbers, you cannot continue adding numbers just because you would have to. You have to create other opportunities. How do you create other opportunities? Through opening up. You think that if you go to the Kutuka International Airport, that has been expanded. Is it not jobs that will be created for more space that have been created? If the Tamale International Airport is completed, is it not going to employ people? The shoe factory that is, that is on, is it not going to employ people? The uh, Commander Sugar Factory is going to employ people. The uh, airport expansion, the uh, seaport, Takuradi port, the Tema port and the rest that is being expanded. It is creating employment. Various infrastructure that is talking about is creating employment. You cannot be able to employ everybody. Even in the very developed countries when we had the 11% growth that is talking about, we could not employ everybody that was available to be employed. Let's admit the fact that, yes, there are challenges that every economy is facing. Okay. There are many even bigger economies that are in recession now, but Ghana has continued to be very resilient. It's continued to be very solid. We understand and appreciate that jobs must be created jobs must be created for the young ones who are getting out of school and even those who are not in school they must be trained to be able to do things on their own we accept that fact and we accept that challenge but government is not punishing anybody in terms of government is not pushing down any policy on people because imf says so kofi let me speak to dr rashid dramani he's executive director of the african center for uh, parliamentary affairs he's joined this discussion on phone. Uh, Doc, grateful for your time tonight. Yes, good evening. Okay, so uh, let's start from here. Uh, you might have followed proceedings. For you, uh, were there surprises as far as who lost, who won is concerned? Yes, there were, there were surprises. Um, but personally, having been somebody who follows our parliament as well as other parliaments around the world, I personally wasn't surprised because I saw this coming, especially uh, mostly following what happened within the MPP. I mean, I knew that uh, 
this was coming. Uh, and so, uh, w the likes of E.T. Mensa, the likes of Alfred Agbishi, Joe Gidiswe, and the others fallen, George Lowe and the rest. Uh, you saw it coming uh, long before the primaries. Um, well, I mean, not specific, specific individuals, but at least I knew that, I mean, there was going to be keen competition, and I knew that uh, there was a lot of interest uh, by a number of young people, and that, I mean, some casualties were going to, to happen. What is pushing these young guys into, into politics? Is it the desire to serve? Is it the fact that perhaps there is something new that they are seeing? That's why all of them want to jump into the fray. Well, I mean, for me personally, I, I have been reflecting on this and asking the question whether um, if we had a complete separation of powers, that is a situation where when you go into parliament, you only become a legislator and that is it. Um, whether people were in that situation, we were going to have this same level of interest. Because, uh, I mean, for me, there might, yes, there might be a number of people who are really interested in serving, serving their, their people. But for a majority of people, I think they are only using parliament as a, as a, as a stepping stone. I mean, they use parliament as a way to get into executive position. And, uh, and that, is, that is very sad for, for our legislature because um, you end up in a situation where you get people who have a lot of divided attention and in the end is a legislative work that suffers. Finally, before you go, uh, the argument that uh, these big shots who are falling out w will drain parliament of that needed expertise uh, to perform you share the same argument? Um, yes and no. Um, because, you know, when you do a very careful analysis, you realize that, indeed, a number of, a number of people who, who are in parliament, who are said to have had a good experience, um, maybe you, you study it very carefully, their impact on legislative work. I mean, it's not that much. So for me, I, 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 I think people can learn. The young people who are getting in there, if they put themselves to the task, they can learn, just like these, these other guys have, have learned. Mm. But, I mean, more broadly, I think we have to be looking at the whole structural kind of... Um, um, the, the, the structure of our, of, our, of our democracy. I mean, are these people, even the so-called experienced ones that we have, do they get the space to operate? Do they get the space, the independence, to do their legislative work as is expected? I think that that's, that's a big question. And I, I, and I think, um, analyze it carefully, you realize that, yes, with all the experience, perhaps they don't have the space to, to operate and they don't have the space to do the work that they have to do. All right. Uh, I'm grateful for your time. Rashid Ramani is the executive director of the African Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Let's come back to the studio. Uh, Kofi, now, le let's start from here. The NDC decided to open the window wide to get a, a lot more of your members to vote. Now, one, what were the disadvantages? We saw what happened. Some uh, were told names were not there. Uh, people could not find their names. Some complained about the, the, the register not being what they had seen earlier. What are where there is an advantage and what has the party learned from the process? Sure, I must say that all in all, it was the best, it was, it was better than the old process of delegates coming in and something because being your, your people could not buy the, the yeah, delegates. they can't buy the okay. delegates, you cannot keep them somewhere and not give access to others. And so, the, <laughs> the people were out there and they were campaigning as if it was a national election mm. because you wouldn't even know if you go to a community who were actually registered members and qualified to vote and who were not. It wasn't easy. Mm. You can't go and take a register and be calling names and say you only invite all NDC members or even the entire community and to engage them. So the positives were very high. We had a situation where some members 
did not take the registration process quite serious and the conversion of the uh, manual data to the biometric data serious mm. until it became so clear to them that the National Executive Committee, per the authority given us at Congress, to decide the way to go, whether to do expanded electoral college or all members voting, when they realized that we were serious about it and that we were given a deadline by which time if your name did not enter our register, you would not qualify to vote. That was where a lot of people showed interest. But some even did not get a chance of having their booklets submitted for entry before the deadline. So you may have registered, mm. but if your booklet was submitted outside of the deadline, you will not be captured. Okay. It's like the Electoral Commission of Ghana. They, don't, they are not able to capture everybody. There's a time within which they register. In 2012, there is a particular electoral area in the Upper East region that refused to be registered when we were doing the normal registration. So they went to court. The Supreme Court finally gave a ruling and a directive for the Electoral Commission to register them. They were registered, but they could not vote because the law says that your name must be in the register for at least 42 days before an election to qualify to vote. So the same applied. You may register as a member of the party, but if your registration was done after the deadline, you would not be able to uh, vote. Is, has registration stopped? The registration continues. It's, it's, not, going to, it's not going to end. I, I'll, I'll speak to David, but I want us to clear this. A, a candidate didn't find his or her name on the list. It's, what does it mean? It's possible that either the candidate information, because one of the things about our party is that, and we've changed our, our rules, that to be a party member also, you must also register in the general election. So the best way to be able to guide this was to link your, your admission to also registering to vote. And so one, if you were not a registered voter for the last election, it's possible that you cannot be found in the system. Is the party scared, for instance, that uh, uh, Dr. Zenato Rawlings, who could not find his name her name, name, sorry, on the list. Uh, Dr. Oko van der Poy, who could not find his name on the list, is not a registered voter in Ghana? Of course, they, we are not scared because these are eligibility uh, criteria. The Electoral Commission will be opening the process for registration again. Even where they do limited registration, we're going to have registration before the next general elections for people who would have turned 18 and others who were not within the jurisdiction to be able to register the last time the registration was organized to have their names captured. So if these persons were not registered or their data is lost from the system, okay. they have a chance to get that sorted before the filing of papers. Okay, so, but it doesn't go against the party's constitution. No, it doesn't go against the party's constitution. On, on the national no, register, no, 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 you, no. you cannot... What, okay. All you needed was to be a member of the party. So during the vetting, we placed more emphasis on the old membership card, mm. the manual one, than the biometric membership card. Because the old manual one gave us much more information about you for the previous three or so years than the biometric card, which has just been introduced. And therefore, it's possible somebody can just pick the card and you may not get the records of him that whether he's truly been a member of good standing in the last uh, 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 I'll come back years. to us to talk about healing the wounds. But David, the expanded register of the NDC, how beneficial has it been? Should other parties quickly jump onto that? I think that this expanded register is so phenomenal and it's so good to the extent that it has really marketed the political party and rebranded the political party very well. Um, you know, the, their tradition, they are picking a lot of things from the, the Labour Party. did about, is it 700? Yes, MPP did it. You know, what, what triggered this plus. whole location or this expanded register was when MPP did this. And then I listened to the founder of the party, His Excellency Jerry John Rawlings, said that NDC must outweigh what MPP has done. And the following week, the General Secretary, John C. C. Dunkatia, also came out to support that statement. And then it triggered the whole debate about how... So this is a good idea. It was the a fact brilliant that were, idea there were, there that were allegations of other party members infiltrating... Uh, uh, and getting the, themselves no, on, no on, on the party's uh, electoral Whichever road. that you looked at it, although they are claiming that some people have infiltrated, but 
looking at the benefits of, of, of this expanded register, it is so good that, as we speak now, they have a data of their party members, mm. almost about 2 million and 7,000 or more. If you have a political party and you have registered 2 million people, you have a political advantage over your opponent because going into an election year, you can reliably assure yourself that at least you will get about 98% or 95% as they voted for the president mm. to vote for you. So that one, you have a political leverage over the opponent who does not know where his supporters are. So it gives you a certain leverage over one another or one political party. And, and significantly, if you looked at the people who have really contested this election, the parliamentary you know, election, it, it's so good. You just touch on Dr. Ezenato Rollins. Mm. I mean, she's coming from a family that has really, you know, it's more like an institution. If you mention Rollins' name in African continent or any part of the world, he's, he's been recognized as somebody who has done something creditably well for, for this country. If you, you, he hasn't done anything at all. So that puts her ahead. It, it has that, you know, leverage. I mean, she belongs to an institution. And so it puts her, I mean, forward more than uh, Honorable Niyama Ashite because okay. the name alone okay. is just like a magnetic forces that attract people. And so it's good enough. And there are other people too who had also gotten a certain advantage. Look at your friend, Sam George, for instance. I mean, going into a contest with E.T. Mensa, I mean, a very popular candidate in Ghanaian you know, political, you know, architecture, very popular person. But look, Sam George has gathered a certain level of courage that, no, I want to face this man. And so far, he has been able to prove to every young Ghanaian that you can also do it, no matter the strength of the person, no matter how the person is endowed with a certain knowledge. Mm. I mean, gather yourself psychologically and resource-wise to be able to contest. And okay. it's, it's so good okay. enough. David, I'm not cutting it, but uh, let's get ready to wrap up this conversation. Uh, Hufi, so let's look at this. Sam George, E.T. Mensa, we saw what went on. Now, Francis uh, Sosu Xavier and Amadou Sorgo, we saw what went on. In fact, this is only uh, in Accra. Now, other regions, there were some candidates who were engaged in very, if I want to put it that way, uh, intense campaign, campaigns that saw words, exchanges, not palatable at all. Some have said that this is not good for the party because of perhaps uh, shadows of what we're seeing with the NPP. Sure, that was why we intentionally put measures in place and we punished people even along the line. We have had cause to suspend people who have been vetted and qualified to contest the elections. That was what at least ring fenced. So to a large extent, yes, there were exchanges, but some of the exchanges were as to acceptable exchanges. But it doesn't mean now that the election is over mm. and people have either lost or won. Like the president put it, if you win, you must be magnanimous in your victory. And when you lose, you should be a gallant loser. It is our responsibility as leadership, together with our flag bearer, who is also now the leader of the party, mm. to find a way of bringing all these persons together. And right. he's already given that indication that before the year ends, all aspirants would have to come together. We would have various levels of engagement. All of them will have roles to play. The E.T. Mensers, the Alfred Agbeshis, the various towards who, who, who lost, they all have rules. The president did not support any of them. Not at all. Support the candidates against those who the lost. The president never supported a candidate. Okay. And he made it very clear. And I'm a national organizer. If the president was supporting a candidate, I would have known. There's a difference we have between... We are even using your own name. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they, there's a difference between behind, it's behind me. And I, when they complain, <laughs> I say, okay, you to use my name. You are all free to use my name. I see. So yeah. there's a difference between maybe an appointee of the president, possibly supporting somebody, and the president himself. We should try and differentiate these two. The president never set out to, to support anyone, because he was out himself trying to David, campaign. David, let's wrap up. Just give me 30 seconds. After this, where is the NDC going? Where, where do you see the NDC going from here? 
I think that what the president say, uh, said need to be taken into a serious consideration of meeting all the aspirants, both the losers and then the winners, mm. so that they can dialogue. Especially they should have a dispute resolution mechanism of ensuring that all those people, no matter the strength, the, no matter how you know the whole election went, looked mm. at uh, Honorable E.T. Mensah and Sam George and then my, my good friend Alaji uh, Sorogo and then uh, Xavier. Yeah, I right. mean, uh, it, some of the words that they were just exchanging were okay. not, you know, good at all. And all so right. they should be able to have a certain mechanism of resolving some of those conflicts. Look at uh, Medina constituency. It's densely populated by, you know, the Muslim community. And, and so it is good that Xavier, one way or the other, Although it's so painful because he has invested so much into <laughs> it. But David, it is I know good where you're that going. Honorable uh, Surugo won. Okay. They'll be grateful. Kofi, so you are national organizer. You are deep in there. Uh, uh, Park, we see, is a running mate. Uh, the running mate, the, now we have a flag bearer. Uh -huh. The flag bearer has to come to us. He will consult the Council of Elders, come and consult uh, he, the he's executive. Not told you. No, he's not. Yeah, the national so we are, we, we are waiting. Tell us, he's told no, no, no. He'll tell us. He's, he's he will come and tell us who he wants. When? And if we are okay with that, we will set out the time very soon. Is and you will hear. Is I'm saying that if you listen to the person's comment and then you know where it will go. But okay. I want to wait for the chief to whisper into my ears to okay. announce to the public before <laughs> I will do so. Could but I want to use your medium to congratulate the winners. Right. And also those who could not make it. They are great people. They made the, the process happen. And all of us should team up, support the leadership for us to retain power to the city. Kofi Adams is the national organizer of the NDC. David Agbe is the executive director of the Ghana Institute of Governance and Security. Gentlemen, grateful for your time tonight.